We also have various security threats we have to worry about, such as computer viruses. And computer viruses occur in a plethora of ways, you know, such as a virus sent over an email, and then that person sends it to other people, and then you have a widespread virus that's been introduced into your company's network, and it happens all the time. Um, so this is one of the things that computer professionals have to pay attention to are the viruses because they definitely create that security threat you know even if it's like a keylogger software threat that's been introduced to your environment where the strokes of the computer are being recorded and that information is being sent up to a third party who now has you know passwords or if your accounting department is using you know putting in credit card information or different like information like that that information gets recorded and then sent up there so we have to definitely be careful of the that type of problems that we can see from our end users. What's some of the health problems that can occur such as carpal tunnel syndrome from workers doing that same type of repetitive work every day uh, you know a information worker that is working doing data entry and not really moving around much can develop that type of uh, syndrome so you know we have to think about ergonomics which is the field that says how to design a workspace that promotes you know, not only worker health, but as as well as their safety. So we want our workers to be safe, healthy, and productive. So ergonomics are, uh, we definitely have to look at that when we're designing like workstations for our information knowledge workers. Now we'll take a look here how our organizations provide a user support function. We can see that we have these broken into two different areas here user support versus technical support. Now computer user support, or simply just call it user support, provides information services to workers or clients to help them use computers more productively in their jobs or even at home because they can take those skills home with them. And you can see that we have a broad spectrum of services based on this large circle here. We also computer user support is kind of those help desk type services or those really low level services. Whereas technical support is usually a level of user support that focuses on advanced troubleshooting and problem solving in an organization. And you can see here we have it has a much narrower focus of support. Now organizations provide support to their workers in a variety of ways and you can see this figure here kind of lists the most common methods in organizing the user support function. You know whether it's peer support, part-time user support, all the way to user support outsourced, not done within the organization, to a vendor. And we'll take a look at those now. Now peer support is provided as kind of informal. It's just kind of colleagues assisting other colleagues to you know get those problems fixed. You know, we also have this part-time user support, which is, you know, some organizations just can't simply afford or justify a full-time person to be able to provide that IT support to their organization. So then they just kind of have someone who does it kind of part-time as a part of a function of their job. We also have user support workers or user support team. This is a more formal work group that provides the different support services to the organization. Now that user support team can consist of workers who provide support in addition to their also job responsibilities or they can just do that type of work. The advantage of the, kind of having a split position is that the support workers can be familiar with the day-to-day -day operations of the organization so they have a more global perspective of how the organization works and how those you know individual IT problems can affect other parts of the organization. Next we have our help desk support. And a help desk kind of provides a single point of contact in an organization for the users to get their technical support they need. Now that help desk area in an organization can include, you know, several different options, whether it's a physical location where those internal or external clients can go when they have a question or problem. Or, you know, maybe it's you know, a telephone number that everyone has a number to to call in, you know, kind of call it a hotline where whether it's internal workers or external clients, they can call for assistance with, you know, whether it's hardware or software, they can just, they have that type of ability to get their support. 
or possibly the organization has decided that their help desk support is going to be done through email so they give them an email address you know such as help at you know whatever organization dot com so that everyone knows they can use that email address to send in the information they need to get the support that they are needing at that time for the organization help, de help desk staff attempt to resolve the problems as soon as possible if they cannot sometimes they have to refer to another level of support or even an external support to try to get you know that issue resolution you know, and that just depends on the organization as to what type of support they have decided to incorporate in their organization another one that we try we see more frequently now in the help desk support role is that of providing a chat service through a tool in the organization to be able to just you know log on and maybe get in a queue to be able to get that chat in real time rather than an email and then having to wait for that response and then you may or may not have a person actually come to your area to help you so the chat service sometimes will also able the support desk person to be able to remote in and provide that assistance in real time by taking over someone's machine now another step up from that is a user support center which provides a, a wider range of services than just what the help desk can supply and that might include services such as consultation on computer purchases or a training center to provide training to you know the organization's workers for like new software or even some of those you know day-to-day -day tasks for new users coming in that next level up is using user support as an IT responsibility where you have the IT department that you know primary responsibilities might be to design and develop application programs and operate the organization's systems and telecommunication networks some organizations have found this to be not as effective for that kind of lower level end user support function so you might see you know kind of a blend of these in an environment it just depends on the organization's goals responsibilities financial abilities to as to what type of level they're going to provide you also have a user support which is outsourced to a vendor this is where all those type of support services are done externally rather than internal in the organization now outsourcing can be an attractive option for an organization due to the costs and taking advantage of expertise that might not exist in their local area of course there are you know disadvantages that can come with this outsourcing because outsource support usually occurs by telephone or email because the on-site assistance can be prohibitively expensive and out you know outsource support costs are typically predictable although not necessarily lower than by providing an internal support within that organization and there's also the one of the largest disadvantages is that your outsource support doesn't really kind of develop any type of personal relationship with an organization so it doesn't know how everything works and how everyone can be affected and when you have that internal support sometimes those personal relationships give a greater sense of comfort when reporting those issues now let's take a look at some of those common user support services that an IT function needs to provide to an organization you know some of those support services include staff a help desk hotline or chat service to provide information provide technical troubleshooting assistance for different hardware software and various network problems maybe need to assist users with software development projects or prepare documentation on technology use or perform computer facilities management tasks uh, locate information you know whether it's go out and do the research for your different users to assist them with what they're doing or you know really important function is to evaluate different hardware software and network products to introduce to an organization rather than letting a user just go ahead and buy some software and it may not even be compatible and you may need to perform some needs assessment and provide purchase assistance for users do they actually need this equipment or software or maybe you know the users need some assistance on getting some software into the organization so you need to go out and find out the most cost effective as well as maybe an industry standard for getting this done so that it's compatible with some of your vendors a lot of different user support functions or support services that are needed
Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the position descriptions for user support staff, but a position description generally is just a written description of the qualifications for and responsibilities of a job in an organization. And if you go into an organization and a position description hasn't been created, you might want to work with your HR department to get one created. These vary from organization to organization and how they interpret a you know a support staff position because they will decide in that organization all right this person needs to provide this type of function or this person needs to provide that type of function you may have an organization that wants a network administrative staff but they also not just want them to be able to provide any type of help with the network but also those help desk type functions on the actual user needs for oh if a person's got a problem with an Excel spreadsheet they want to be able to figure out that information too even though that person as a network admin may not have those skills because what they've honed their skills on are network functionality only so these job descriptions can really vary through an organization so as you're looking at job you know that are you know posted you may not meet all the qualifications, you may meet some, but it doesn't hurt to go ahead and put in for those positions and see if maybe you can grow with that organization and develop those knowledge, skills, and abilities. Now I'll define that a little bit more too because you'll hear about KSA or knowledge, skills, and abilities in various different functions. But knowledge is just what a worker needs to know to perform a certain level of job. You know, and you see some of the categories listed here. The skills are what the worker must be able to perform for that job. And then the abilities are functions that a worker can either perform or they or not, such as, you know, with physical or language abilities or even special abilities. So you can see the difference between knowledge, skills, and abilities. And if you have a little difficulty with the precise differences between skills and abilities, that's all right because people often use the terms interchangeably. Now, support workers may use entry level support positions along with additional education training as a career pathway to a position such as these listed here that go beyond that user support worker. I Maybe mean, you want to be a programmer, developer. You, know, you like the network side, you want to be a network technician. Which kind of involves different tasks such as installing and configuring a network, those network servers, cabling, different things like that. Or you maybe you want to be a website manager or a maintainer where you can work with software packages such as Dreamweaver to be able to build and maintain websites. Maybe you want to be a support manager who kind of plan and schedule the work of the support staff. Or you want to be a project manager and work on different projects for an organization in their IT area and you'll work with budgets and and schedules and meeting the deadlines of those upper level managers and of the organization maybe you want to be a trainer you like to do technical writing you want to go around and, and train by creating these presentations and working with the you know the staff of an organization to train them on introduction of a new software piece or some type of new function such as a help desk software and you want to train the users how to properly use that or maybe you like the security aspect and you want to work as a security specialist in which these workers kind of develop and implement different plans to protect computer systems both wired and wireless networks from different sources of internal or external threats as well as recovering if one of those type of threats do become real in an organization. Well guys, that's it for chapter one. It was just a broad introduction to computer user support. I know there were a lot of terms in there, a lot of different uh, you know, timeline, job descriptions, a lot of terms. Take your time, go through that, make a checklist if you need to, and take a look at those chapter questions. Next chapter we're going to do is over some customer service skills for the user support agents. Thanks for joining along.